Welcome to Azure Data Explorer Shorts. I'm Vincent from the Azure Data Explorer team, and this is transforming IoT data using Kusto query language. So last time we looked at ingesting data quickly from a file we found on the web. This time we're gonna look at IoT data. Each IoT solution is unique, their own ways of ingesting the data. But let's look at some common pattern. Let's say we have an asset, a drone. Is that a drone? Was it a faucet? No, no, jury is still out. Let, let's assume it's a drone and it emits data. And it's not alone. So there are a couple of friends, a fleet of drones emitting data. Most of the time this data is not sent directly to the cloud. It's sent through an intermediary, a field gateway. So a field gateway aggregates data from different drones and sends it, let's say Azure. Let's be nice today and say it's JSON data. So the data could look like this, so a payload would come from a gateway with a gateway ID, and it would be a sequence of messages. Each message would have a message ID, a message timestamp, and would contain a sequence of events. So we have a sequence of messages, each containing a sequence of events. And this is one payload. So let's say this is going to IoT Hub and it's ready to be consumed by Azure Data Explorer. What do we do with that data to make it ready to be analyzed? So let's jump into the web UI of Azure Data Explorer. Let's say I have this sample that somebody gave me of this JSON. The so first thing I could do is store it into a variable. So let's say dynamic this and just print it. All right, so I got this document I can work with. It. Let's say I just want to paste the column name by doc for document, and I'll just push that into a table. Let's call it IoT payload. And I just created this table. Okay, so how can I work with that? First, I notice document is an array. So first thing we should do is MV expand it. MV expand, very powerful operator. It's going to take each element of an array and make it an element or a row on the output result set. So bang, and we can do something easy. You can just extract or strong type properties we see inside each message. So you extract the message. You can do the similar, something similar with other properties. And if I go back inside the document itself, I'll see then I'm left with this sequence of events. I extracted everything here. It's strong types. So I could use it. And one way I can look at it is say something like get schema, which is going to return me the schema of the result set here. So I see that the doc is still the dynamic type but then I get strong type with date, time, and string for the other columns. So I, I, I'm getting there. So I'm going to do an second MV expand on events, except it's doc.events. And now for each of those already two rows or two messages, each of the event is now creating its own row. And here we are. And now we can do the same thing we did before the event data. First, I'm going to project away the doc column because I already used all of it. And I'm going to rename that column to events. It's easier to manipulate. Oh, just a bit of repetition. We're going to strong type a couple of columns. And if I look at the a drone ID column, I'm seeing that it's actually two columns or two bits of data crammed into one. So I got like 1.2.19 here. It looks like a version number, semicolon, and something that looks like an ID. So I'm going to parse that. I'm going to use the parse operator on the drone ID column with version. Then I'm going to say there's a delimiter with a semicolon, and then just capture the rest in the column drone ID. Boom. And just like that, I extracted the version number and the drone ID. This is powerful stuff. Forgot to take the device. And here I'm running a bit over screen. But you see the device is the device on the asset. So the asset is the drone and the device, I get a GPS device, an internal temperature device. Now, if I look at one of those payload, one of those events, I see the only thing left is the measurement. And measurement changes. So let's, let's just look at, let's just extract it real quick. Measurement. 
And we'll see, actually, it depends on the device. So GPS will send a GPS coordinate, an internal temperature sensor will send a real number. So what could be interesting is to say something like, well, let's take the coordinates when coordinates exist. And otherwise, let's take a temperature when temperature exists. And boom, just like that. Of course, project away events. Tidy up a little bit, so I got my message, the timestamp, my message ID, gateway, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So in a few minutes, I was able to write this query and to completely extract the data from a JSON document, flattening the arrays, doing all that. And this way I could do that during the ingestion and store that strong type data inside the table and analyze that. And indeed, that is something we often see in, in IoT solutions leveraging Azure Data Explorer. I mean it really demonstrates the power of expressiveness of KQL, but also power of exploration of the platform where you can quickly unpack data and get insights into your data, regardless of the, the original format or the raw format of your data. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Follow us on those different social platforms and until next time.